Yeah, this is a, another option select you can do. So your options here are you can tech the throw, you can block their attack, or you can, um, I guess, defend against uh, an assault with a jump back A. Um, and that's really going to depend on your character. Now this one's hard for me because um, I'm using a, a hitbox. And I kind of got in this bad habit of um, jumping with my right hand. So I'm having to play in a way that I'm not really used to. Today I'm jumping too early and I'm getting hit out of my jump startup, so I gotta delay it. Yeah, I'm, I'm delaying the other part of the throw input too much. I'm pressing the button too soon. Mm 
Okay. Um, so I kind of got used to the time, so I can explain a little bit. So when they run up, you want to sit on crouch block and then input a jump for one frame. So as quickly as you can and then let go. So go from down back to up back to down back. And then right after you do the, the up back, you do um, one A and then while you're holding A, press D. So you're essentially blocking and you let go of, well, you switch from uh, blocking low to jumping back and then go right back to blocking low. And then um, you press A and then D. That way, if they assault, then that one frame that you pressed up, you'll do a jump back. And by the time you go back to your down block input and press A, you'll be high enough in the air to do a jumping aerial, a jumping A. Um, or if they attempted to block you, then you would have tried to jump while you were in block stun. So you just continue blocking after you um, return to the blocking input. That way you're not blocking high while they're doing a, a low block string. You just get opened up. Um, and then you plink into the D button or just you, you quickly press the D button um, while it's still in that uh, input buffer window of a few frames. And that way, if they didn't do any of those things, but they threw you while you were in your jump startup, your pre-jump frames or jump startup frames, then you'll tech that throw rather than getting thrown. So, uh, yeah, essentially you want to, you know, go through these different option selects and try to learn all of them. I would say to pick them one at a time and try to incorporate them into your gameplay as much as you can. Um, once you get used to doing them, either the generic ones like the bash backdash tech or the more character specific ones like the anti-air option select, um, just practice those and just try to, to go maybe one new, one new option select per week or something like that, or however long it takes for you to get used to you know, knowing that you have them to choose from and being able to perform them. Because you'll see that it, it did not come to me very quickly as I had to learn the timings for this character. So it'll, you know, especially if you're new to this sort of game, it might take you a lot longer to, to get them down. So yeah, this, this is the Veil Off option select. And it's warning you that if you're in the um, infinite worth excess uh, activation conditions, then you can't do this. So you gotta be careful. Um, but here you'll see that it's um, sit on crouching block and then wait, and then just input all four uh, buttons at the same time, A plus B, A plus B plus C plus D. So if they try to tech, if they try to throw you, you'll tech the throw. And if they try to hit you with a normal or special or assault, then they'll get hit by the veil off because you have um, invulnerability frames with that from frame one. It's like a universal uh, reversal. It's very, very easy. As soon as they run up, you just do that. And um, the only thing that will lose to is if they run up and block. So, oh, I, I thought it was on the last challenge. Um, let me restart this. Let's see, uh, assault and lift attacks. Sure, what they mean here. Oh, they're saying doing it to do it late. Wait, what's their um, 
What were they saying? I'm not sure I get this one. Clearly they mean um, whiffing a normal out of an assault, but it sounds like they might be saying that, um, oops, it sounds like they might be saying that um, you recover faster from a jump attack than from an empty assault. So if you're trying to whiff an assault, then you should do an aerial and whiff with it before you land. I think that's what they're saying. That, that sounds a little bit odd to me, but maybe that's something that might be on a, a wiki. I don't know. I'd have to look more into that later on. Um. Hmm. Maybe they're saying that it's more of a mix-up to do this. than to do this. Yeah, just um, by listening to the amount of time between the the sound of him landing and the, the sound of the 2A being blocked or hitting. Um, if I try to do an assault and then 2A, and then compare that to an assault with a, a whiff jump C into the 2A. I don't know. It sounds like there's a there's a little bit less time if I whiff the 5C, but it might just be the the sound of the 5C startup like throwing me off. I'm not sure. But I mean the game is saying it seems to be saying that that's the case. So I'm just going to trust it. So yeah, here it's saying that uh, an anti-air tech is very strong. And this is a way that you can kind of defeat that. So this is going into the, the next la layer of Yomi or kind of anticipating what your opponent's going to do next. Um, hmm. Bait the opponent into using the move and then striking at their failed attempt. Yeah. So if they have a, an option select that involves poking, then you can just bait the poke and punish the whiff. That's what they're saying. So now um, this is like the reverse of the previous option select training where the CPU is going to do the option select and you're just going to try to bait it. So generally what that means is uh, you beat an option select by acting like you're going to attack, but then 
not attacking. So you like a approach and then like backdash or block or something. Well, let's look at the demo actually. So yeah, I guess the CPU is supposed to go through a, a I guess canned series of things so that you can just practice the timing in order. So So yeah, that's um the game is just kind of demonstrating to you uh, some options that one character might have against option select. So once you kind of understand the situations where you would want to use option selects in, then you can come back to this lesson and kind of figure out, like use this as a template and figure out what it is that your character can do to try to, for example, um, get a, a frame trap in. So yeah, that's um, it's pretty basic stuff, but it's important. So try to make sure you spend some time into it. I'd say that's the overall theme of the veteran course is that like they they get you very um, a, a very shallow dip into some aspect of the game, but then it's really up to you to spend the time to truly internalize it. So here they're, they're talking about something called delay cancels, but really what they're talking about is uh, a frame trap. So essentially when you're doing a, a block string or any kind of string, um, your opponent is going to try to steal a turn by pressing buttons themselves. So instead of simply doing a tight block string where your opponent is stuck in block stun and they can't do anything, you want to bait them into getting hit by delaying your attacks and just putting as wide a gap as you're willing to risk in between each attack um, so that you end up kind of meeting them while they're trying to get a hit in. So yeah, here he, they're, they're saying that his, a, his uh, 5A, 5B Gatling um, is a true block string except when you delay the 5B. So they would recover from block stun and they would be able to attack, but they would be at a disadvantage because you have frame advantage uh, after the 5A. So this is something that'll apply to a lot of different fighting games. So this is a, a good lesson to really sink your teeth into, but I, I don't think it takes that long to learn. Um, essentially, just do delayed attacks in your strings to try to open up your opponent. So yeah, that, you can um, practice that by uh, enabling reversals on the dummy in training mode. Just set them to block everything and to do a reversal with a 5A or 2A or something. And then um, if you hit them with your block string, then you're timing it correctly. And if they hit you with a block string, then um, you're delaying your attacks too much. And if they don't attack at all, then your block string is airtight and you have to loosen it up a little bit, just add in some delays. So I would say to, you know, if you have your block string to practice doing it on uh, delaying the second hit, delaying the third hit, maybe delaying all three, but just keep in mind that the um, amount of time you delay your attacks by might impact the amount of pushback of each of your attacks on block. So um, just keep in mind that you might not be able to do your full block string if you're delaying all of your attacks by a lot depending on the character.
he was saying that you're in uh that hit stun lasts longer than block stun across the board meaning attacks that barely connect into a combo have some open frames in a guard um you're just saying that you can punish unsafe attacks or uh, unsafe block strings. Well, no, I got that wrong since you're the one on offense. So essentially, it's saying that this, this Gatling is a built-in frame trap even if you press it um, immediately. So here, I'm just kind of dialing, uh, dialing it in. You can see um, they're guaranteed to have uh, enough time to press a button and get hit. This is another uh, one of the many reasons why Hyde is a good character is that he has little, you know, he has a little bit of all of the, the strong tools you'd want a character to have, I think. Or almost all of them. It's kind of why the game is picking this character to demonstrate these uh, techniques with. Let me see what that said again. You can smart steer a standing a 5A, meaning you can't cancel it. Because if you try to do 5AA, you get your second hit of the smart steer combo or the auto combo. But if it gets blocked, you can continue inputting 8A to do a cancel into another 5A. Because you can't smart steer on an 8A input and you can't jump cancel from a guard. Um, I guess they're saying that you can you can do three A's or multiple five A's if you use um the jump input because it disables smart steer. And since you can't jump cancel on a guard, then you wouldn't get a jump when you're trying to press up while uh, the opponent's in block stun. So I guess they're kind of saying that if you apply um, those aspects of the rules of how those attacks work, then you can get things like um, essentially doing a, a little hit confirm or block string with 5A rather than just 2A. Yeah, if you want to safely continue the opponent's guard stun, hit the opponent with a crouching A or 2A two or three times to see their reaction. 2A is a safe way to gauge the timing of your next moves. Um, so that last lesson was saying that you can do what it's saying here with 5A if you have a, a, a long 5A or a far reaching one. It's saying that in general, you want to, you know, do those little pokes to, to do hit confirms. You're essentially, you know, checking to see if an attack hit before you commit to completing the combo or doing an unsafe attack in that string.
Meaning you can stop some combos by countering from a successful shield. No, it's, you can stop some strings, really. Because um, you're not in a combo if you're able to shield. You can only do that from neutral or block stun. But they're saying that you recover, you, you spend less time in block stun if you shield an attack compared to not shielding it. So that's how you can sort of um, create a, an opportunity window or steal a turn in this game, um, even when you're on defense, is by successfully shielding an attack. Um, depending on the attack that you shield, you can sort of force an opportunity to strike back where you might not normally have it. You can counter with an invincible move after a blackout. Um, I'm not sure about that term blackout, but we would normally refer to this as super freeze. Um, so, for example, in a game like Marvel vs. Capcom, where you would see um, frame data or an attack, it would say that you know it, it has this plus that in the startup. Essentially, that first number is going to be the amount of startup frames before the super freeze. And then the second number after the plus sign is going to be the number of startup frames after the super freeze. Um, but during the freeze, depending on the game, sometimes you can uh, enter an input. And what this is saying right now is that during that super freeze for an EX attack or um, an infinite worth, you can enter directional commands and then they actually made a game mechanic out of timing the button press because they're saying that essentially your directions will go into the input buffer but not your button inputs until the super flash ends. So if you time your inputs correctly then you can react to a super or an EX move 100% of the time. <laughs> So let me try that now. Oh, it's a uh, half circle forward C. All right. I was too slow. <laughs> it, it takes some, some timing. There you go. So that half circle forward C EX move is projectile invulnerable and also really quick and far reaching so you can react to um, an EX projectile 100% of the time once you get the, uh, the timing down. And again, um, half circle forward input is not super easy or consistent for me on a hitbox. So I'm often just not getting the commands right. But there you go. We'll go on to the next one. So yeah, here they're saying um, you can kind of maintain your positional gains by um, I guess keeping up with what the opponent's able to do when they tech after you finish your combo. And they're also recommending that you do um, ground slam attacks so that um, they get hit with a hard knockdown and they're forced to just not be able to quickly recover. And here they're saying that when you end an aerial combo to either a dash or do a back dash so that you can kind of keep up your momentum, keep them uh, where you want them to be. It's also saying that you can um, anticipate where they're going to recover to and then put yourself in a position where they switch sides in a way that they might not necessarily expect. And so because you can carefully time the, or, or you can carefully space the way that you move, 
you can essentially make that itself into a mix-up. Of course, they don't have a, a training for it here for some reason, but once you understand it, you'll, you'll notice it happening online. You just kind of learn that just from playing the game. Um, this says Okizeme jump attack, but this is really just called a safe jump. It's when you uh, time and a, a jump in as meaty while your opponent is waking up. Essentially, you can get the um, active frames of the attack to be uh, intersecting with their hitbox as they're waking up, but it's so late that you land with enough time to begin your uh, ground blocking, your crouch blocking, before they're able to do anything. So if they try to do um, an invulnerable reversal against your jump, then essentially you're so low to the ground that it just whiffs, or you, you just block it because it's so slow. Let me see how they do it. Okay, it's uh, jump back area. We see that again. Yeah, so that's that's the safe jump setup. You do that. I messed it up. I forgot to do the jump in. Uh, I would say I did it that time. it too uh, early. That was definitely... Yeah, I definitely did it right before. I don't know why it's not counting. I guess I did it too early. Oh, and I guess that's not just projectile invulnerable. It just has full invo. I guess I'm supposed to block this. I feel like I'm getting it right. like I'm doing it. Oh, wait a minute. I know why. I'm doing jump 2C because I'm blocking too early. I was just doing the wrong move. Yeah, you just have to do it at the very last second so that it's actually meaty. There it is.
me just see the timing. I see. So essentially, I want to do um, a 2-2-A two, two, into a chain shift and then block, but I want to do it really late so that I get the, the most active frame pressure out of this. Gotta do it a little bit sooner than that. A little bit later than? It's tough. So yeah, you just kind of get the timing for it. Um, you essentially want to get the projectile out and then uh, chain shift right after that, but do it all before their attack could hit you. Now this is saying how to uh, defeat a backdash tech. So yeah, essentially, um, if your opponent, if you can anticipate what sort of tech option your opponent might use to avoid your offense, then you can do those attacks to try to uh, beat it. Of course, it again goes into, um, I guess, not attacking in the situation when you would want to attack. Like, that's essentially how you beat uh, an option select, but it's not always that simple. Like, you, like there, you had to do the, uh, the sweep, but it might be a different attack with a, another character, so... Just try to go into training mode and make sure you're knowing that you know exactly what the right attacks are to do, or just ask someone. So, uh, chain shift reversal is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Um, if you have Vorpal State and you get knocked down and your opponent is going to do something on your wake up, run some sort of Oki, then you can beat it by just mashing the D button and doing a reversal chain shift and just kind of taking that time to parse the situation and respond to whatever it is that they do. So the, that was a, a low attack, so I just uh, blocked, but what I could have done was an invincible reversal, so I'm gonna restart here. So yeah, you kind of get used to that. Um, you get knocked down, you mash your chain shift, and if they're pressing a button, just mash your uh, reversal. I can just get the chain shift to come out. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Just make sure um, if you decide to go that route that you're uh, used to doing that. Um, but yeah, if you end up in that situation, then if you want, you can create a situation where 100% of the time you're going to win neutral. Um, just because you do a chain shift and, you know, assuming they don't block and then try to tech a throw or something. Like, there, there, there are ways of defending against the chain shift reversal, but at worst, you're in a, a neutral situation. So, make sure you're able to, to do that.
here they're talking about um, doing chain shift while in neutral to convert your grid gauge to your axis meter. They can use it to counter opponents, reduce risk. So if you cancel out of an, uh, an attack that's otherwise unsafe, you can um, make it safe by spending your Vorpal. Um, or you could just hold on to it and use the damage bonus to deal extra damage when you get a punish. And, and also take advantage of the Vorpal trait, which I, I don't think has been mentioned yet by the game, but we'll see. It would benefit you to be able to chain shift while simultaneously trying to stop the opponent from using their own chain shift. Um, yeah, so essentially, uh, try to win the grid war is what that boils down to. Yeah, something to keep in mind though is that when you uh, chain shift and use up your grid gauge, you might be allowing your opponent to win the next grid war for free. So you kind of want to be careful how you um, how you time that. But alternatively, maybe they're already about to win the grid war, so you want to make sure you use your uh, chain shift and convert that meter while you still can. Yeah, TS gauge tactics, yep. What you do before the full cycle is crucial. Yeah, here they're just saying to start worrying about the TS gauge about um, three quarters of the way in. So you essentially want to be looking down at the bottom center of the screen at least once every seven seconds or so and then make sure you, you you're consistently winning the grid war i'm just waiting for them to mention the vorpal trait because it's it's weird that they haven't yet here they're talking about some tactics you can use to try to win the grid war but i would really recommend um reading the how to get good at uni series uh which is linked in the description that will go into far more detail than this game ever would on how to you know be mindful of winning the grid war Yeah, here it's saying that it's um it's critical that you are uh, shielding correctly. So you have to try to learn matchups and know when you can and can't shield. Because some characters, for example, might throw uh, well use throws in their strings to try to trip you up if you're attempting to to shield, or just vary their strings high and low to try to break shields. Yeah, using a throw near the full cycle is very risky. Because uh, if you win, you steal t uh, grid. But if you get teched, then you'll lose that grid that you would have stole instead. So it's like, be careful. Success. Yeah, concentration is when you um, allow your excess meter to drain so that you can fill up your grid meter. So if it's uh, about to be the end of a cycle, then you might want to try to create a situation where you have a little bit of time to charge it so that you can get um, the lead in that tug of war. And then they're saying uh, you can prevent it also by um, approaching and poking. Yeah, throwing a stunned opponent is the best way to handle those who use guard shield often. Yep, that's pretty much what I was talking about earlier.
So this is saying that if you just try to do block strings all the time, your opponent can guard shield and gain a lot of grid and then win the, the grid battle. And then they can start to turn the tides. Okay, yeah, doing it too often, they'll start to shield it. So you want to bait them into shielding, with delays, and stopping your combo early, and try to mix it up with throws. So yeah, if you get the timing down, you can um, bait a uh, shield such that you have time to dash up and grab them. I was a little bit loose with the timing, but you kind of get the concept. Yeah, so here they're saying if you hold 3 and mash D, so down forward, and then just mash the D button, um, essentially... The next time your opponent leaves a gap in their block string, you'll chain shift. Um, and you have to hold down forward and not down back, because otherwise you'll get a guard shield. The saying as soon as you get the chain shift, you can uh, do your invulnerable reversal. Well, I did the wrong one. Oh, this is going to be difficult. See, so yeah, I kept shielding there. It's tough. So yeah, that's it's pretty self-explanatory. Do a reversal, reversal chain shift, and then you, um, during the super freeze, you just input your invulnerable reversal. You just get a, an unbroken streak of invulnerability. You counterattack them. You can verify that they're in the middle of an, an attack or a block string, so they can't really do anything to defeat what you're doing. And then yeah, if you had gotten shielded, then um, or if you had gotten uh, grid broken, then you can spend your uh, chain shift to remove your grid break, or if you had done a guard thrust before. Counter with hard thrust. Oh. That is a funny case. That's really interesting. So essentially what they're doing here is showing that rather than um, burning your warp bowl so that you can do the guard thrust, um, you can do a chain shift and then do the guard thrust while um, 
your excess meter is like draining your grid gauge into it and before that process is done if you do a um, guard thrust it won't have a penalty that's kind of cool Huh. Using chain shift with six or more blocks in your grid gauge will reset the count on your limit for jump cancels and bounds, and you'll gain a bonus towards damage output. This often goes unnoticed, but it's useful to keep in mind. Huh. Um, you know what? I never really think about this, but I guess this is why there are, um, if you go to Mizumi and look or maybe even in the mission mode for this game you'll see that certain combos require you to have vorpal state so that you can do a chain shift at a certain point and then after that chain shift you're i guess often able to take advantage of the jump cancel limit reset and the bound reset so that's good to know that's another little tool that you can use if you want to come up with your own combos Yeah, here it's saying you should try to chain shift before you finish a combo um, so that you can convert your grid gauge into excess before you win the round because you, you definitely keep meter from round to round. So yeah, it's kind of saying you should um, yeah practice using chain shift in particular sections of the combo so you can use it when necessary. So yeah, if you... If you um, yeah, my recommendation is to do it just before an infinite worth or EX attack. Yep. Um, yeah, that's just a good tip. That's something that you'll realize on your own or remember on your own when you get to a certain point in this game. Yeah, if you land Veil off in a combo, you can remove the opponent's Vorpal state. Um... Yeah, that's just something uh, good to know if you have a character that allows you to do a fail off in a combo. So I guess uh, Hyde has just such a combo, so let's see. into it. It's not easy though. Interesting. 
Well, um, that is the end of Veteran. I mean, there wasn't really much to add to that. You do cross-cast off in the um, Infinite Worth Axis activation state. You get a bonus on your EX moves, and they'll uh, cost a little bit less to perform, so it's very good little skill-based comeback mechanic of sorts in that you at least have to practice it. But um, with that being said, that's the end of the veteran course, and that was the last tutorial. Um, so if you ever want to go through these courses on your own in the game, just understand that they're sorted by topic. So if you go to all on the course list here, you can actually see every single tutorial for every aspect of the game sorted from beginner through veteran. Um, so this can be just handy. It's like, you know, you want to practice your Oki, you can learn everything you need to know about Oki's MA from going through this list here. Just kind of refresh it. Um, grid, shielding, chain shift, veil off. At the end, you have the different command inputs. So if there's some sort of input that you have trouble with, you can go here and sort of practice it. Um, you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's a little description there. If you jump into it, um, yeah, it's okay to get an extra direction in there. There's little tips. Um, yeah, sometimes uh, there will be an explanation, but I think that's more for the mission mode than anything. So, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this series. Uh, if you have any questions, please just let me know and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks and peace out.